Hello once again to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we are making a dinosaur, cute dinosaur model. In this particular episode we will be doing the fine sculpting details using alpha brushes and our multi-resolution that we set up last time. It's worth pointing out that there's two ways to do this. You can sculpt the details on and it makes your painting much quicker and easier or you can actually leave these sculpting details out and paint on bunt maps. Sometimes that can be easier and give you more control in the painting process. And I might try doing it both ways, I haven't decided yet. So what I'll do, I'll bring up this to almost cover the outliner and I'll bring it out just a touch as well. And I'll bring out a window here so I can have my texture in this one and my brush in this one, and that's quite handy. I'll create a new draw brush. So just here to create a new one and I'll call this texture. I'll make the curve so it goes all the way out, so all my texture will be seen. I might just taper it off really slightly. I just click and add a point and then taper it off just at the edge, just in case I want any to blend into each other. So maybe a tiny bit more, especially when it comes to things like the sort of bumpy knobbly bits, <laughs> whatever they are. The stroke method, I prefer anchored. So we go up to anchored. If you want any more details, I do have a link to all this stuff. Search for Alpha Brushes on my channel and I'll put a link in the description and a card in the corner hopefully. And lastly, it's the texture that I want to change. So I'm going to add a new texture and let's search for a texture over here. So I've got my texture tab here and I'm just opening up my brushes. I've got a link to lots of brush sites as well that might help you. This one looks good, even though it's metal paint bubbling, but I think that'd be a good one. I'm just searching through could do them with some sort of snaky scales as well. Yep, so I'll go for this one for now. You can load lots of different ones in. Okay, so let's have a look what this looks like to start off with. So click and drag, and obviously my strength is way too high. So undo that, bring it right down. And that's looking quite nice, but probably still a bit high. So about 0.1 for me with this particular brush. And you can see there's stretching happening here, and it's linking up down the middle. So I want to turn symmetry off probably when I do the middle bits and I need to sort out this stretching. And that can be fixed by coming down here to mapping area plane. And now it doesn't stretch. I'm going to undo those strokes though because that looks a bit weird at the moment. I think it's still a bit high so I'm going to go down to 0 0.07. In fact what I'm going to do down the middle I'll make it a lot higher then I'll fade it in around here maybe put some strong ones around his legs as well. So I'll go up to 0.1. I'll do the side bits to start off with. Just have to be a little bit aware of where they overlap. In fact, no, I'm going to turn symmetry off. I want them to look a bit bigger. So symmetry lock, turn that off. It's just the overlap I'm not so sure about. So what I'll do, where the curve is again, I'll just bring that in a bit more and see what this looks like. So from the front, and then a bit of overlap. It's not too bad, just a bit too much overlap. And we're seeing issues down the side here, but that's not too bad. Getting there. And down the sides, I can just smooth those out a touch and take them away from the nostrils as well. And I don't want them around the eyes. There we go, he's looking pretty interesting. Make sure you rotate it every now and again so you've got sort of very different, non uniform type of splodges and try not to overlap too much. Yep, it's looking kind of fun, but I can smooth just those areas out, which is a bit laggy for some reason. I'm not sure why the smooth is laggy. <laughs> I should have turned symmetry back on, shouldn't I? So now I've done the middle, I can turn the symmetry back on. To compensate for the lag, I'm just doing it by tapping and quickly moving. 
and not moving too far I should say not quickly moving that's not too bad and now with the brush strength turned down so let's go back up to the brush strength and I'll go to 0.7 now so I'm sort of fading it out Ooh. No, 0 .07. 0 .07. and these ones are going to be smaller as well that's what I wanted I want a bit more detail though on the legs that's great and then back down to point zero seven and this is with one and a half million faces so it's not looking too bad I don't think you can go higher if you want more detail but I don't think it's really necessary in this case what you have to be careful of if you think oh that's not quite out far enough and then you go over it again it can start looking a bit distorted and ugly in some ways so I personally wouldn't want to do that I'd actually want to start all over again so uh, testing it out getting your brushes right I feel like these could probably stick out a bit more to be honest but I'm kind of happy with how it's going and I can chat to the client and see what they want it doesn't take too long this stage so it's not too bad For the last bit that I might like to do is add just a tiny bit of variation in here so what I'm going to do is grab a new brush so I'll create a new one there and it creates exactly the same brush for some reason so I can just open up a new texture and I might grab a rock brush seems a bit weird at the moment but maybe something like this and then with a low strength again just so it doesn't look so uniform and flat I find it can look really plasticky if you're not careful and in fact this makes it look a bit more like plasticine or something like that or play-doh you might call it but it gives it that texture and more fun I think so you can dig in as well as pull out with this brush I'll turn symmetry off quickly for the middle parts So hopefully that will give him just a touch more character. You don't really want this around the claws where you've got smooth things. And there we go, it's looking quite fun. Again, like I say, I'm going to send this to Andy and see what he thinks. But I will leave it there in case he doesn't want this or doesn't want some changes. The last thing for me to tidy up will be the teeth. I kind of prefer having them as separate objects, the same with the eyes. It's just a little bit easier to texture in that case, so you don't have to sort of overlap when you're painting and have those sort of problems. But if you were 3D printing this, then you would want to Boolean them all together. And ideally you'd do that before your multi-res, but it doesn't make too much difference. So just having a look at the teeth, making sure they're okay. I might give a bit more shape to these front ones. But I can do that manually by going into edit mode and just sort of giving them a bit more of a curve. And I think the detail can be added with the paint on those ones. Last point that might be useful for you. If I want to change back my brush from the texture brush, I can just go up to this menu here, click on the other brush, and I'd like to bring these out just a touch. I am going to turn symmetry on before I do that though. And there we go, that's enough detail in the sculpt phases. Next time I'll be baking textures out and using them for painting. Hopefully you're still enjoying the course, do comment below and let me know. And I'll see you next time.